On this episode, we talk about Get Stacked One Hundo. All the skills that we've achieved over the years and worked on. It's a, it's a cool episode because it's just like a little bit of reflection on kind of where we've all come from. Pretty fun, huh, Danny? Yeah, it's pretty surreal to kind of think about the origin story of when Corgi Fitness started and now we're 100 Get Stacks later. Yeah, you should have wore your nationwide polo. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't have one. Yeah. <laughs> Trayvon? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely cool to like reflect and uh, just kind of see like where consistency, like where consistency can take you in life. Yeah, facts. Yeah. I think it's a good episode for people to take away, like, how we got into these spots, like, what we did to get here. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just cool to think about, like, there's, like, dude, I was, like, fucking, you know, in high school whenever, like, the get stack started, so this is pretty sick. Yeah, I think also trying to pick up strategies for people that have aspire to do different things, right, that are outside the box and how those things happen because – that's like a lot of questions I've got. Like, how did you get in these spots, G? How did you get around these people? And the, and this is, this is I think, a good layout of how those things happen over time. And then the accumulation of work I'm super proud of. And so it's a little bit of uh, Corey G Fitness Get Stacked Stories. And we're on to the episode. Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's at Small Arms. Danny at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com and Sam Adams Boston Beer. We appreciate Sammy. you guys. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, hey, Sam, shout out to Sam Adams. We're almost uh, done with our first supply. We need some more, homies. Get that, that winter lager. Yeah, yeah, winter lager. We need like the specialty pack. We're ready to fucking. Because, dude, the last episode, I mean, I was fucking hammered. We need oh, to get that. We need that was to amazing. get that. <laughs> it was really good. It was actually, pretty fun. I had some winter lager this last weekend. Actually. Yeah, I oh, bought. Really? I actually what? bought yeah. some winter lager. I'm even supporting the guys supporting us. I went and bought some. As you should. I know. It's amazing. Those who support you. Yes, I agree with that. Support all the homies. Yes. (laughs) I'm not paying for max effort, though. (laughs) 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 I'm just going to go outside and grab one. Wait for the next deal. Yeah, I'll wait for the next (laughs) deal. But you should take advantage (laughs) of the next deal at maxeffortmuscle.com. Join the revolution. Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly what Danny said. Cole. What would yeah. you would you text out so, what you want to talk about? Yeah, we haven't so, done just episode by ourselves we, yeah, in a while. So yeah, Cole's yeah, already I, smirking. Look at yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what what word did you just use? Smirking. smirking. Oh, smirking. smirking. I thought you said smirking. That's what like, I thought he said. I was like, smirking. Danny, is that new vocabulary? What the fuck does that mean? Yo. <laughs> 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 All right. So I thought you know. So <laughs> as by now, whenever you're listening to this episode, get stacked 100 has officially dropped. Fuck yeah. Which we calculated how many. It's, years, it's months. Eight, I, I believe it's eight point three years of workouts. That's yeah. <laughs> so, because I started the website with five. Yeah. Because there was there was five uh, there was five get swoles. The sixth one never made it out in the MP days, and so I redid those five with shit I had you know relearned or whatever. And so when we dropped the website uh, December of fifteen, mm. it had five get stacks. Wow. Now fast forward to. December of 2022. Yeah, it's wild. We now right? have one hundo. Yeah, because I was just thinking. I thought it would be interesting that we all talked about this because yeah. we all started at different stages yeah. of the Get Stacked program. Like me personally, I started training wise on like Get Stack 12 pumps off the heezy. <laughs> I remember that one specifically. Is that, that the red and black one? I love that name. No, I, that's, I was that's still, too. That's I was still making my too. own covers then. I'm uh, yeah, pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, the, off yeah. Toe. yeah. Pumps <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah. So, the, so we've done. So, we, pumps off the heezy is a trilogy. We did. Yeah, the, yeah. It is a trilogy. Because I made Such because trilogy. pumps off the heezy was one of my favorite ones and one of the first. Like it might have been the second or third cover I made was. Mm. The pumps off the heezy where I just photoshopped G's up on the little Wayne on the little Wayne, <laughs> which is absolutely ridiculous. Oh yeah, because it looks like my torso is all like weird. Yes, so yes. good. But and the funny thing is that that pumps off the heezy is literally something I said one day at an arm workout. Yeah, get stack like, forty five. I was like, my pump is yeah. off the heezy today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it happens. Literally, so, what I just said to somebody <laughs> just yeah. came to you. It's poetry. Yeah. <laughs> it's poetry. Because. <laughs> Just thinking about it, whenever I made the cover for Get Stack 100, which is like this dope collage of basically so every sick. other, I tweeted out this morning, like, this is like five. It, I've done this for 63 months. 63 months has made it because I started the first one was 30. technically Get Stack 36. Okay. 
but it wasn't a cover. Yeah. It was just a photo of you with text on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, that a mac and cheese? cheese? That close to mac, mac and cheese. Jacked and cheese. Yes. Jacked and cheese, which might be that my still my yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. A, that's a good one. yeah, get stack thirty seven, which yeah. still might be my favorite workout program so of all good. time too. Also, the Saturday chest and back workout in there is the one I always go back to. Very golden, very golden era, swollish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. So, but that cover is what started it all. Uh, Trey just said he had a time hop hit him the other day. Yeah, so like on Snapchat, it gives you your memories. Um, five years ago, like two or three days ago, I was doing get stack 30 at the pit. <laughs> yeah. So, that's wild. Yeah, that would have been like when I was in high school. So that's kind of wild to think about. That's so good. It, <clears throat> it's amazing that the consistency of that amount and, and the group has been together for this long. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Danny, you didn't really do necessarily the get. What well, did the get stack? No, I mean, came. mine was get swole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so you're you're pre you pre but those guys you did get like, swole too. I, I, yeah, I originally started out with get swole. Yeah. I probably ran through the first phase a million times. Yeah. Trey was yours blueprint. What did you do from the MP um, or just daily workouts? I found your shit on bodybuilding.com. Yeah, I wonder which well, one. I forget what it was. Though. Okay, but it was one of those. So it's yeah. probably one of those. It's yeah. one of those but ones on bodybuilding. Yeah. I know for a fact it was on bodybuilding.com. Yeah, so it's either get swore blueprint probably. Yeah, it would be interesting to go back because I have like those old notebooks. Yeah, I'm yeah. like writing shit down, you know. That's so funny. Yeah, just talking about how fucking sick my arm pump was. Right, <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Right the arm, no. That arm workout was wet. Yeah, if you, no. if you, just, <laughs> if you yeah. just knew that you would really evolve to at small arms, Danny. I mean, yeah, it's a great evolution. <laughs> oh god. What's wild is, uh, you know, I can look back at the programming and really realize and really see just like how much I was learning too, how much yeah. it's evolved, how much we really involved into two sport athletes too. Mm. You know, because early on, it was really bodybuilding workouts, and we would just go to powerlifting meets. That's just the fucking truth, right? Oh, I thought it was basketball was your second one. Yeah, well, uh, that's yeah. The, my third. That's my third one. <laughs> Ask Treadway. I, was, I think I was eight and one or something like that. You're and a so, oh, shout out Treadway. <laughs> uh, so the um, yeah, that, that's tough, Treadway. We uh, we need a we probably need a season three so he can try to redeem himself on one on one. The uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, so what I can see, though, is is how the evolution of, you know, the more I was programming, even though I had, you know, already learned all the West Side stuff and everything, like I started to program differently, try things, and it just the whole thing has evolved. And, and I keep thinking about the way that we document, the way I can go back, and I can see exactly through the phases through when we tried to deadlift every day and it didn't fucking work when we used to bench three times a week when we did a golden era workout now we're doing mixtures of all this stuff i actually tried that shit i remember talking to you about it and i was yeah, it was a terrible you was like hey maybe give this a go with your olympic weightlifting and i'm like for what deadlift every deadlift day every yeah day. That was terrible it, it, idea. Was, uh, yeah, it yeah, didn't was, work yeah i'm glad like the younger kids want to like yeah you exactly know, to to you know what i mean yeah. so it's like I think that for me, it's it's amazing, and I've talked about with this, with all you guys multiple times, is being able to have that documentation. Like people don't have that. Mm -hmm. Like Louis has a lot of things that he wrote down and and re went back. But imagine if he had every conjugate split that the gym did every week, real time. He, did, he yeah. you know, what I mean, it, he didn't really log it like that. It was all in his mind. So like once again, I'm very thankful now. But I'm sure as I get older, I'll even be more thankful that. We've put together a library of information that's this vast, a hundred fucking four week workouts that aren't like me just rushing through them that are well thought out every month and executed at a consistent level with homies that can do things at this level. It's, <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. It's the get stack library of Congress. Yeah. It's that's fucking, what it is. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, it, I'm proud of it, man. Yeah. Like real proud of it. It's all, it's a long time to stay dedicated to something. For sure. <laughs> so why don't you why don't you back up to on like when you start doing the the covers like the spinoffs <clears throat> with like rap covers and shit like that like what like what made you think of that why did you want to do well that? I think Cole just saying he could actually do that you know it I, was you recommended. It, it, it was literally if so that's whenever I was starting out and the first one I literally just think you said what what if like i think we came up with the name jack and cheese yeah because that's what we kept saying in the gym <laughs> and i said right? can you put me on the cover of a macaroni and, cheese and i box? was yeah and it literally <laughs> was like yeah fuck it i'll try it whatever and if you and if you go back and like look at that one you can tell it's very early yeah that's why we eventually we did another one yeah. but it was you know the 
how I cut it out and did all that stuff was very basic. But then it was like every month it was just like, can you do this? It yeah. was like a fucking challenge. Yeah. yeah. But it made I, your skills a lot better. Made too. me like learn a lot of shit. Like yeah. YouTube and all the time, just figuring shit out, understanding how the software and shit works. Yeah. It was you, fun. You can really see the evolution of really all of our skills, not just my programming skills, Cole's skills, Trey's skills, and your skills. Like even the way that you're laying out. Do you think about how many different ways you've been laying out stuff on the app or on the, <laughs> I was on, just looking on at the, the website? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Trey's camera skills every day on a regular basis. And then us even putting together, even though the, the actual, those workouts, the little videos aren't a bunch, like really hard, but just like the actual, like, execution of the get stack workouts like on the blog and the videos there's what a thousand it is it's an insane amount insane. of training yeah. 1083 like, was today yeah 10 a thousand eighty three <laughs> training videos yeah what yeah, like <clears throat> that's just something that goes to show that uh first off when i started the website people were super confused they did they just didn't even understand how i could like even make money on it but they also didn't understand there was hundreds of thousands of people doing my workouts on bodybuilding.com but the reality is to keep it up, to improve upon it, to have qual for all your guys' skills to improve at the same time as mine, it's just something like our group should be really proud of. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's afforded us all a lot of freedom in this life, every fucking one of us, to not only have something steady that we enjoy to do for the most part, but also allowed us freedom to do other things, which we all are able to do. So if I look at anything that obviously MP was necessary, but really the move to Corey G fitness and, and getting this programming and having the right group around is what really gave mm -hmm. not just me freedom, but I think a lot of us freedom to be honest. Facts. Yeah. Right. Why don't you talk about that transition then? Cause I, yeah. I remember that it was a weird time. Like when, when you had to let us, let us go. Yeah. Right. When I had to and fire I, Danny. I, yeah. And then, you know, you're, I remember this vividly. I mean, you were sit. I came over randomly one morning you were like sitting in the hot tub and you can tell you had been thinking a lot about a lot of shit. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. Yeah. So like what hot tub. At my house? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can't remember that. Yeah. Is that that day I fired you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was yeah. after. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was funny when you the, the day you fired us was on a Monday too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was Monday morning. Wow. And we're like, well, what the fuck? We do the rest of this day. Yeah. It was so so. I was so like, weird. well, um, I'm pretty sure I'll be right behind you guys. So. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> we're gonna do something different. Then I had that I, awkward call with the HR chick. Yeah. Sarah or something. So like, weird. Yeah, was, yeah. Well, the, yeah, anyway. so the key is, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> that's all right. The transition to the, the, the other thing is, is this was not a, everyone has a fucking app now mm -hmm. or has like, you know, train heroic or something that they do. That's like someone else's app. But the reality is this is an unproven business model. Like there's mm -hmm. only one guy I knew that did it and he didn't do half, not even a percentage of the content that we do. But like when we started this, in 2015 to have a native app for a fitness influencer that's not like on the biggest loser so i'm like i'm not a mainstream guy mm -hmm. this was really really in a league of its own out there yeah yeah yeah, yeah mm -hmm. for sure so like building it and seeing what it did and what it does i'm like super proud of because i i was able to test my monetization skills off uh, the main skill of why I'm popular in the first place, which is programming. You guys were able to enthusiastically help me bring it to light while you're able to work on your own skills at the same time. It's like, it's really a perfect storm of a lot of things that of why it's so successful. In the first month, I always share this number, but never any after. I had 800 people. I had 800 people the first month. And I was like, oh, this is real. Just by hitting the on button. Just by hitting the on button. And the on button was weak then. I didn't know it. None of you guys worked with me. Joomla? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. it was on a terrible <laughs> yeah. platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to talk about this. Like, yeah. what was the process like? So you're just, like, figuring this fuck out. Like, are you, you're uploading the workouts and shit. And you're making oh, the pages and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So what was that this, like? This is great. I, I'm going to paint you guys a picture. Okay. <laughs> so when I go through really stressful times in my life, <laughs> or, yeah, dude. Or business things or whatever, I always return back to what I know, which is work. I know how to fucking work, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm dealing with some dumb shit or I got some type of transition going on, you'll see me bring the work pail. You see me do shit that like just get just get down to it. So I literally, 
you know, I, I think the office was still being rented for a while. Like they paid out the lease for like eight months. So I still had an office. It had a gym. I never touched any of that stuff. Right. But I never went there. I got a fucking card table. I built my wall in my basement, just like the other podcast wall over here, put in the equipment and I took dude. And you guys have been to my house. My fucking internet is bad. Mm -hmm. it's trash. It was that taking is. me 30 minutes to upload a three minute video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even fucking joking. So I go, so I, I literally start work immediately the day after I quote unquote leave or whatever I take, I, I think I left on like a Friday or something that following Monday, I get a black card table. I put it in the fucking gym in my basement, which, you know, looks bigger online, but it's really super small. Mm -hmm. And I go there and I told Rachel, I'm working here eight hours a day and I'm building the fucking website. I got the local dude. I met at the fucking bar to do it. He put it on a platform I never heard of, which I don't even think exists anymore, which is like a WordPress, but it's called Joomla. Okay. And I fucking, and I do everything. I think I'm doing customer service. I think I'm, I'm shooting the videos. Yep. I'm doing everything, but building the website, We're going but I'm, held. but <laughs> I'm even building the website because I'm actually creating the pages and publishing yeah. them all of it. And then I realize, uh, so I get it up. I release, uh, I think we, we drop it December 1st, I believe. So I had about two to four weeks of just every day in my basement, collecting information, rewriting stuff, whatever. And I hit the button on, it's not even an app yet, just the website. And like I said, 800 people joined because they love the workouts. They want them to stop, right? They wanted to keep it going. So I was like, okay, first off, this is crazy. I expected probably three to 500 though. If then that, maybe that sounds like a lot for people, but for the amount of video views, <clears throat> I knew my analytics, I'm getting 50 million page views on the get swole. I'm getting 60 million. Like the yeah. page views were insane. So when that happened, I was like, Oh shit, 800 people. And then people are having credit card problems, all kinds. I'm like, Oh fuck. Am I going to do this? Like I couldn't even handle the initial customer service to save my life. Yeah. And then on top of it, I realize I need somebody that's like an editor. Cause one, I can't write. We all know that <laughs> Two, Like I'm not, I'm, I need to, I need to immediately get to what I'm good at and I need help with this thing because it's going to make real money. So I call my mom and I'm like, ma, I need, I need you to learn this computer shit. Like she's like, and you heard her yesterday on the <laughs> yeah. phone. Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm like, listen, I got to pay somebody. I'd rather pay you. <laughs> Fucking we, you yeah. need to learn it. So I think she starts literally about 60 days later, essentially part-time, but full-time. She wasn't doing anything else. So, but she was telling me, oh, I'm thinking about cleaning some houses. And I'm like fucking going to clean someone's house when I could teach you how to fucking do this. Like we're done with that bullshit. You yeah. know what I mean? And I was like, you forced her to learn it. Danny uh, was loving his life at Nationwide. Shut up. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> ready to jump out the window. Yo, hey, on your side. hey, question, question. Were you wearing button ups or did you wear like polos? Dude, so all right. So at first I thought it was like standard. Like you have to wear, you know, the long sleeve button okay. up, right? Yeah. And then once I heard from a manager it was your babies. that, <laughs> that uh, once I heard from a manager that it was acceptable to wear a polo, never, never wore it again. Yeah. Just I had to let him breathe. He, he, he down, wore tight, tight bowl, khakis just, and a polo every dude, day. I was, I was rocking my <laughs> My fucking green sales rep. From MP. <laughs> my, yeah, my green. It was like a fucking lime green what, sales rep. When did, you, <laughs> when did you start in 16? When did you start even part-time? Uh, It was early 16? Yeah, it was definitely in the first half of 16. Like spring, probably. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so if I launch in December. It was June 1st or July 1st. Yeah, mom comes on initially like it, it was part because it was still like a full-time gig, but she was just handling it, and I was just paying or something. And then Danny started helping me with some of the stuff, and I realized like he had a knack for it. And then it was like, um, you know, how long did you work at Nationwide for? Uh, like a year and year and six months. I think. Okay, yeah. so you worked part time for a while then. Yeah, I was. Well, I remember chirping you early. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, this is not gonna fucking work. Like, this, <laughs> like the, I'm gonna <laughs> literally die in here. <laughs> <laughs> so that was probably like early 2016. Yeah, and then like. Oh yeah, then I fucked up on day one. Remember that? Yeah. So I, yeah. I think Danny is like the most disciplined. Like, you know, he's on like it. he's on it. Yeah. Which I was. I mean, I was to some extent, but not that day. Day one. <laughs> day one, he actually gets paid. Okay. He forgets to do 
But you forgot about the. You it was just like posting a, the workouts or like changing. Just the posting oh, the workouts yeah. for all my new members to follow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what, what, did you have to upload it by a certain time, or you just had to get it done by the like early morning? Yeah. Like, yeah. It was basically like, oh yeah, let's go find the railroad tracks near me. Yeah. <laughs> so, I like, so so literally, I call him. I'm like, I'm like, Danny. Um, I I know it's like your first day. Like, you gonna post the workout? Yeah. <laughs> but like, what time of the day? Was it? Like, three? I think it was like, like no, between like seven and nine. Probably, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't remember if it was when I was still at Nationwide that it happened, or if it was after. Right after. Oh, time. I think it was right after you went full time okay. because I remember thinking like. For me at the time, I'm just coming off that crazy shit. And as me starting to pay more, especially to say, okay, Danny, this is your full-time job yeah. for a concept that's only really worked for a couple months. It was a little weird. And then the first day he's full-time is like he just slept in. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just so good. Yeah. Uh, Way to go. Shout out Content Kyle, too. Kyle, when did, wow, you, start, yeah. when did you start coming to film here, the, wor- here, the workouts? You want to come take the mic, Kyle? What was the what was that time frame? You were in high school. So what year did you graduate? So it was like early 18, 18 probably? Uh, we'll call it like 17. 17. Okay. So you were a junior. Yeah. Okay. So when did you come in full time? Uh full, full time? Yeah, it was 17. Uh, like June of 2016. Okay. So there you go. So mom starts a little before she starts in the spring. Danny comes in in June. Kylie starts probably. <laughs> Kylie. <laughs> Kylie starts like the early the next year, roughly probably like early seventeen. When do you? I came in, so I was training with the crew in February of seventeen when I started. Okay, so there it's all starting to match up. I started making shit that summer during school, so it was like late seventeen then. Yeah, or probably early like 18. July because I was living. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, it might. Yeah, it was like yeah, it was like July or something like that. You know yeah. what's you know what's funny about this too? Because uh. I don't think I like even spoke any words to Cole like until yeah, I me and Danny know, fucking what? basically didn't like Never really talk to each other. You guys didn't nothing. even kick it. Nothing. No, like I, there was a certain time where like I just like I didn't fucking know Danny at all. Yeah, so I was, was like, like this mysterious yeah, dude. Nobody knew <laughs> Danny for yeah. Yeah, and I mean now you guys are arms army buddies. Yeah, yeah it's facts. That's General's amazing. Actually, Je- yeah, yeah. Je- sorry, but yeah, no, because I because I remember because <laughs> I was. <laughs> I'm not sure, buddy. <laughs> yeah, because I remember the whole dynamic. Danny was like this guy that I didn't really know, but I had to work with him, and I liked like I I would see him every once in a while. But well, yeah, had he was nothing. Danny Ferris. Yeah, ba- yeah, basically, <laughs> basically. So he's like this mystical fucking person. who works at every coffee who shop I'm just, in Grandview. Who, who will just text me sure, say, much, "Hey, yeah. can you like make this?" And That's I'll just true. text it back. And I remember like there was multiple times where like in class Danny would like need something, so I would just whip out my fucking computer in class and like make it. <laughs> so shit. good. That's yeah, dude. That's the best when you're like somewhere you shouldn't be doing something, but you are. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. I'm not, like, I, I'm not gonna lie. Probably there was probably because I was also trying. I was also doing max shit too. Yeah, so yeah. there was a time like in like the business classes at like Ohio State. I'm just like working on shit, trying to get it done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so good. And then listening. I mean, it was epic when I had two 17-inch monitors and Cordy Thinnis was on the left and Nationwide, the call center yeah. was on the right, yeah. you know? Danny's <laughs> talking to people about their fucking auto auto fucking insurance at the same time he's putting those. Life, life, ins- life, life insurance. Life insurance. My yeah, bad. Insurance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I would, like, deliberately, like, this is terrible. But, like, I, I, I would just, like, get out of the queue on purpose. So I'm, like, because, I mean, he you're, would you're, fuck you're, up Nationwide's you're wearing life insurance. a headset like this and you say, beep, and that means someone's on with you now. I'm, mm-hmm. like. We were like, hello, this is Daniel. Yeah. And then, like, when you have to hear, like, when, when you have, like. <laughs> hello, this is Daniel. If you pay me, then when you <laughs> fall down the stairs later, you'll be okay. <laughs> this is Daddy. I mean, Daniel. Oh, no, yeah. no. Oh. no, but, like, when you had, like, a, um, you know, you did, like, a monthly, like, meeting with, like, your manager or whatever, and they yeah. would just pull three random calls. And then, like, <laughs> so you have to sit there and listen to yourself. <laughs> and so, well, I'm like, hey, wow, you sound like a showed pretty yeah. much yeah. and then two you're like wow you sound really unhappy so I was like, uh, no. that made it even more obvious i'm like man you gotta make some moves so i yeah. actually did try i i actually i mean all jokes aside i actually did try to like you know give it a fair shot you no know? you try you were about to be in you were about to transition into the marketing with the sports stuff right as you came yeah which full time. i and i just kept being told that i wasn't allowed to do that this is what danny kept bringing up out of all the shit that he hated about it that he was not like it's almost like he wasn't able to ascend because he had to follow some direct path exactly because he wanted to move to marketing do like 
nationwide golf tournament. Like, he wanted to be involved in that shit, like Peyton Manning. Like they do yeah. a lot of cool shit too. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's like he had to go. Well, you got to do this, then do that. He was like, why can't I just interview for that? Like it was like he he wasn't making sense of. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sitting here for 12 years to then maybe get an interview for that. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I was basically told I had to put it put in my time in this area for like two years before you could even like explore these other things. And then I literally. I hit up my mom. I was like, hey, you, don't you know somebody that works at Nationwide? She she connected me with her. She knew the dude who ran the marketing for the NFL. I'm like, yeah. and so go. I, I met with this dude like three times. And then on like the internal like uh, website or whatever where the job postings were, I saw one that was about like uh, – it was like social media and like working with the tenants in like the Nationwide, like where Trey lives, like the arena district or whatever. And I'm like – now this sounds fucking cool because it was working hand in hand with the yeah. business to help yeah. them increase their business. And I'm like, so I got an interview with that and it was like the old, I don't know if she was like the captain or something of like the lacrosse team or field hockey team at Ohio state and like had an awesome conversation. I'm yep. like, this is so, so twisted and backwards. Well, but that whole thing of like, that's, <coughs> that's just never made sense. When you start jumping over people, they get fucking pissed in those corporate environments like that. That shit never made sense to me neither. Yeah, and that was, like, <clears throat> hard for me to do that, but at that point, you just I just didn't care, I guess. I don't know. You definitely didn't care. Trey, when, uh, when what part did you come in? 18? 18? Um, January 19. 19. Okay, so yeah. right, uh, yeah, because I was thinking end of 18. What, like, get stack was that? Uh, I came max effort end of 18. That's right, because it started effort, max. Max effort was, like, November, I'm pretty sure, 18. That's right, okay. So, yeah. all right. And then Corey G was... January 19th. Jerry. Okay, January 19th. Exit, such a wild exit time. Kyle, bring in Trayvon. Now Kyle's back, so it's good. That was such that, I, I remember that day very vividly. Which one? The one where I karate chopped the desk? I no. <laughs> I so I, I don't I don't remember that one. Okay. I, I don't I don't remember that situation. I just yeah, remember yeah. when you say whenever, karate chop, do you mean like you literally went like that? I tried to karate chop it. That's Kyle. <laughs> said, I tried yeah. to <laughs> Did, it might have been. It might have been the maddest I've ever been. Did potentially you, in my life. Did you life. do a little haya or something like that? I should have. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what, though. In all fairness to Kyle, though, he <clears throat> was doing a good job. He was super fucking young. He went and got more mature, and now he's back and he's doing a good job. So you know, I never look at things like that. And and it gave Trey an opportunity to come and be now Trayvon Dier, right? So like, it all happened the way it was supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. So to me. We're working with both guys that have both contributed to this whole process. Uh, I don't even feel – I feel like it was supposed to happen that way. So Kyle shouldn't feel shitty and Trey shouldn't feel shitty. It yeah. all fucking did what it was supposed to fucking do. I mean, it's just the way life is Because I remember – because you were helping at Max, right? Yep. Yeah. And you had just took the camera because – I think because weren't you going to take pictures at Max? Yeah. Like you were going to yeah. try to learn it, and like yeah, that's yeah, how you're yeah. going to practice. Yeah. So oh, then yeah. you had it with you. So me and Trey were always talking about this because we were in the office together. Yeah. And then I think it was like a Thursday that obviously Kyle didn't show up. So I looked at Trey. And I'm like, Bro, you got the camera? He's like, Yeah. And he went and got it. Yeah. I rem yeah. I like remember like me having the conversation because I think it was right by the lat pull down. Yeah. Yeah. Like on the side. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Shout That's, out lads. yeah. And then I went to the locker room, got the camera, and then I, asked, I was like, I got my camera. And I was like, <laughs> and my answer is gas that thing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, sent, and like, I sent the pictures to Danny. Yeah. And I, was but, like, I was like, these are awful. But, I could do yeah. <laughs> but like, really, like, pe like, when you think about how people think, how can I get an opportunity like this? It yeah. literally just happened as easy as that. I literally just took a fucking desk, put it in a corner, and said, I'm just going to make I'm, I'm the graphics do this. guy. Yeah, I'm just going to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it, it, I think that now the consistency of kind of back to the initial point of having at least a project that we know is due every month, right? So it's like we do a ton of content and we have content schedules, but we know the base of why people are on the app besides mm -hmm. the diet is going to be to follow the, the monthly programs. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you really think about it, that was a concentrated monthly effort that we all said, I want to get better at the programming. You're going to get better at the covers. You're going to get better at the layout, the timing, the organization. Trey's going to get better of capturing the stuff on a daily basis so then I can market it to fucking make people want to do it, you know, between the pictures and the video. So it's like you have that concentrated effort, and then look how it just kept getting better. Mm -hmm. And so it's like I think that's just a, it's an underestimated situation that does anybody do anything for five years straight? Like – 
and <laughs> also, also you sometimes think about it, it's like one like doing and releasing the new yes act is like the most exciting time of the month yeah yeah. because it's a whole new workout program yep. so the pumps are just well because like, you guys this fucking pump. well because you're living the workout too yes so you're excited about that so it even adds to it yeah you're a and then and then you get to unveil the fucking cover, cover. we make then yep. you got the fucking pictures then it's yeah. all it's all of it it's really challenging for me too because I'm still evolving, learning, seeing what the guys are doing, seeing how I feel, you know, trying to push up the numbers, trying to make sure our physiques are. That's why I liked when we do the combo event just last year, which I kind of forget, or this year, I guess, I kind of forget about it because the fuck, there's so much shit going on. But like, you know, being able to do powerlifting and actual bodybuilding, both of them being sanctioned events was massive for the programming. So I don't know. That, um, it's just really something I still love too. And I know that people will do these workouts literally for years and years to come. And back to the other guy I knew that was very successful at it, you know, Greg Plitt. Like, Greg passed away at least five years ago. There's still members on his website six, seven, you know, whatever years later doing his programs, listening to his videos. It starts started to really think, like, I'm putting together a body of work at a level of – uh, the way that we're capturing at, at a, at a really, really high level that I believe the, the content, when people understand the value and they get in there, they're blown away. And so like you guys helping me do all that and making it become, that's why everyone wins. In my opinion, everyone wins because, and I told you guys this, when you all started coming to work with me, you're going to get a chance to work on your skills. And, and if we can build a consistent business, there's going to be money here to do skills that you like to do anyway, right? And that it will help give everyone the flexibility to also be able to make other money and support this. So it's like, I feel like it was a win-win. One thing one of the old business partners said that I did like is that when you do a deal, it should be a win-win for everybody. And I feel like it has been for everybody that's been involved in this project, at least. So I got back essentially you know, freedom that I think I didn't get the first time around. I was able to help younger guys bring up their skills and then see like how you can operate like this out here. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know. It's just, it's been, it's been a really, really, I'm super thankful. Yeah. I think one of the huge takeaways here, like literally with all of us that has happened is like, we always talk about just like having, having to figure things out, being thrown oh, in yeah. the fire and then like just having the starting point and then iterating from there. Yeah. Cause like, I mean, I know we've talked about it before, but well, you, you with the pictures and shit, but like your first version is not going to be no. as good as your last one. And then you see like, the evolution over time, and then you start laughing at yourself. You're like, Dude, what the fuck was I thinking I used to here? record you know? myself on the way to the gym on my phone, which I didn't know what phone it was at that point, but <laughs> iPhone 4, fuck, I don't know. Then, like, go home, download it, it would take 30 minutes, and then upload it on Joomla. And then, I mean, the fucking train wreck process. Dude, I remember you sending me voice memos, and yeah. I would not, not get him transcribed or anything. You're just writing I them. And I'd be rewinding, rewinding. What the fuck you say? Uh, <laughs> I'm like, and it yeah. takes so, so much time. Or just like how a post looks and then like how does it look on the website versus the app. Well, and and a lot of people don't realize like now when the app changed that helped. When we had an app, it's it's awesome. But like back in the day when it was just on the web, it's like what's it look like on this browser versus that browser. Ver I mean, all of the spacing's different. All different. Yeah. And then when you go into iOS updates versus Android updates, like there's a lot. I remember talking to Blake and saying like, this is never going to be a content problem. Whether I'm doing it, whether we have the team, like we have content, no question. But mm -hmm. this is like a technology thing constantly because yeah. it's evolving. So it's like it's its own animal when For you sure. when you move to the app. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's like. I really like, that's why I think, and I always joke about all you guys, like whenever I'm like just chilling and you guys are running big things and you can just have me on your board and pay me <laughs> is that <laughs> goals is goals. goals. Yeah. Like, Hey G, like I need one more board member. Yeah. I'll pay you this much a month. Cool. Remember I've been saying this for 20 years, uh, <laughs> is that is that development time of you guys keeping me young, you know, too, seeing you guys grow and mature and really taking the direction at, at each part that I thought would be a determining factor for you guys to be ten, potentially be great, other than the work ethic, other than all of that stuff. But like Cole's main thing, like Cole, we can be fucking awesome, but you got to be able to flip it quick. Same with Trey. Their area of things is so important to be quality and speed that it, it just, that's what wins. 
because I'm not going to see what Cole sees and I'm not going to see what Trey sees. I'm only going to see my eyes view. It has to be pretty bad for me to catch it. And I still want my shit to be nice. My point is, though, the quality that they can put together and the speed that they can flip it makes the business fucking potentially great quick because yeah. no one else can fucking do that. And you know is better than anybody is keeping me on track to be able to create is really important because I need that. And I told you that I need that because I can be, I can be a, a, a great content creator, but I need organization mm -hmm. and I need help and I need ideas and I need con Danny has to be kind of nagging, but that's part of his job because he's like the, the umbrella editor over the whole thing. So he's the orchestrator. So if I'm not feeding it and you're not flipping it and you're not flipping it, we can't do it right. So it's like he always feels bad, but that's part of his fucking job because sometimes I can turn it on and sometimes I can't. So it's like those things like are all so fucking important to this. It's like, um, I don't know. I just never, I don't think any, it takes all of it to be able to build what we built. And then what I still think is even possible from here mm -hmm. and our efficiency has went up an astronomical amount to where I would think we spend less time to get just as much or more done maybe than we ever have in my opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the con <clears throat> the content schedule, I think too, when you think about how long we've been doing this is insane. Yeah. Cause I mean, it hasn't been, you know, Nas bomb Monday, Friday, daily fire, Tuesday, Thursday, AF Wednesday, yeah. round table, Saturday, Sunday's usually something repurposed, but sure. like there's so much shit that's so much. accumulated, but like, at, for me, because I'm obviously the one making sense of it or putting it up or scheduling it or whatever it is now, especially, like, when I have the opportunity to repurpose something, I, especially over the past, like, 6 to 12 months, I've been trying to make a more concerted effort to, like, bring stuff out from the, yeah. you know, fucking cave. That well, people are never going to see it because it's so deep. Yeah, because I'm like, you oh, know yeah, we, good I remember too. we did, you know, this video and that video. Why don't we... You know, yeah. rerun that or talk well, Cole about just this. redid yeah. every article and they look way fucking way better because I was still the ones making the covers on those. Yeah, the covers, and then I'm redoing the you know if it's out of date or yeah, if yeah. it's not relevant anymore. We're trying to clean it up a little bit yeah. slowly over time. Yeah, well, it's just it. I'm just I just it's just, just so wild to fucking think because it launched in 2015. Yeah, I was like a senior December in high of 15. I was a senior in high yeah. school at that time. Yeah. <laughs> wild well think about I'm it. now 25 think about it uh if we even go back one further right at in 08 uh when i lot when i you know start mp you're in fucking what whenever i first did the the fucking 20 method like arm workouts i was like a sophomore in high school yeah whenever i first tweeted at you it was 20 like 12 13 well yeah because I, so start, I started twitter in 2010 <laughs> like 10 years ago yeah it's, yeah. it's wild. wild i was 15 my arms were it, you know small <laughs> yeah it also goes to show that just to tie it back to just an overarching, like I can't hide that I'm passionate about what I do. Like that's me. That's why it's been happening for so long. And the fact that then being able to build a group of people around it to bring it out to the world in the best possible way, best possible way I can has allowed me to do it for even longer. And what I want people to be inspired by is that I'm really only good at programming. I've, done, I've been doing it the longest. I did it for my friends when I was 14 or 15. I've been doing it for so many people for so long. All of this other stuff I forced myself to do reps of to get better at. That made that even. But the real nitty gritty of it's the free workouts, the programs. That's really what I'm good at. The other stuff, when they first turned the camera on, when we're doing articles, I had to like do all of these things, multiple reps to get better at them. Now I feel like I'm solid at all of that stuff, but it didn't start that way. That's why the reps here, like what I told you guys, like we need to do round table once a week just to get you guys on the microphone. Cause you get mm -hmm. more comfortable, you get more reps, you, you know what I mean? You build more confidence. Like I needed the same things. So I think the get stacked plan kind of also did that for us all in our own way because we had it deadlined every 100%. month. You know, I mean, it's easy to see the graphic change, right? Yeah. I remember Trey shooting from, yeah, the first pictures where he was like apologizing to where then he's like, 
hitting all these this shit during the reps <laughs> yeah. and like you know what i mean it became like a cinema a cinematic <laughs> type of thing but then now we're we, we're going a little bit old school almost like old west side type videos which people can learn a lot from but he can shift right back it's like we can do whatever because we got yeah. all that in the tool the tool belt now you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like it's fucking dope trey what was that like trying to figure that shit out a lot of YouTube. Just yeah. A lot of fucking YouTube. Yeah, like me, me and Cole like always went back and forth about like YouTube videos. Like you can learn anything on YouTube. So like at yeah. that time I was literally just like you like on YouTube, like how to take better pictures. <laughs> like, just, like simple shit. You like literally that typed that. Yeah, in. Like, yeah, like, so like, like simple shit like that and watching like every single video. I think people think it's take, more than yeah, that. And trying to just Dude, take something from my, all of them. It, the shit you can find out by just if you have a question about something, just fucking Google it is insane. Yeah. The resources that if I really think back, like the resources that you guys have is so astronomically different than it was when I was your guys' age. It's un it's it's like almost because I adapted pretty well when that all changed, I'm not probably a quote unquote normal forty four year old dude because I like went right into the social media. I was producing content like it was natural for me. But like it it is insane. Like you have really have no reason not to learn or understand things like my mom we talk, i talked about my mom about stocks for her to be able to like when she was our age she would have had to have some basically rich person teacher have a broker there was like four steps you mm -hmm. can't just go to robin hood and buy a stock tomorrow like it, it's just the barrier of entry that's why i think people have less excuses now than ever mm -hmm. you yeah. guys completely shifted obviously cole you finished mm -hmm. school with business still but it's like you completely shifted what you were going to do like that. And you self-taught. You guys are self-taught, including fucking small arms. Like, yeah. it's like he was going to be small arms accounting. <laughs> Just fucking hilarious. We make that a character. Yeah, yeah. Really. We really do. Yeah, maybe. It's almost, yeah. like, it's almost like Jake from State Farm. I need yeah. like an, it's an, like an <laughs> an animated small character arms. or something like that. Yeah. Small arms accounting With like firm a, LTD. Like a vest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you need the vest and you need some glasses. Sweater vest, yeah. Yeah, sweater vest for yeah. sure. We need to make the, yeah. That that would be incredible. So I think that what a lot of people need to take from this is that uh, figuring this shit out truly on your own with real repetition, not like a little bit of repetition. Like Trey was forced, not forced, he signed up for it, but to be here five days a week at 4 a.m. practicing video. You were doing content then every day of some sort for the app, right? Danny was working on writing and now copy, and he's continued to make himself better in his his a scope of work. It's like you guys got in, in the fucking trenches and really figured it out. And at the end of the day, that continued effort is what then made the NFT project happen. All these other clients, both of you guys have worked on Danny's been able to take freelance work too. And then moving over to help max because you guys were already in the max, you know, situation. Like it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I think too, it's a <clears throat> testament to you with, uh, you know, allowing us to do our own thing, you know, yeah. with giving us the autonomy, like, no, I mean, I don't know a single person that likes to be micromanaged, you know no, what I mean? dude. So the, I don't like doing it. Yeah. So like just the level of trust you put into yeah. us to like figure it the fuck out pretty much. Well, my big know, thing is, is making sure if there's something wrong, we just fix it once and don't repeat it. Yeah. I'm never really getting mad. I'm just like, all right, let's just do it this way. And then let's just not make the same mistake. I mean, mm -hmm. people are all fucking grownups. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I think the other thing is I never looked at anybody as an employee. I always thought that you guys were people who wanted to be businessmen and needed direction. And there would be a, uh, a be able to work inside of an entrepreneurial startup situation. But if we got efficient enough, it would allow for everybody to, to grow. That's why I never, ever, I've never referenced any of you guys as an employee because it doesn't feel that way. Even if you were quote unquote, even though you're, most of you guys are contractors or set up whatever, but even if it was set up different, I would, that's just not really how my, what's not what I was trying to build. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. I don't want like, oh my gosh, he's walking by my desk. I better, <laughs> this is a project by project, get shit done, ASAP nature of, of events. For and sure. that I never wanted to work in that other environment. That's not me. No. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, all right. Let's let's do this. So, for the listeners, like, what's like one piece of advice from everything we've done? If someone wants to get into an opportunity like this, they basically want to do what you do. What's like the one piece of advice or skill or whatever you need to know to do fucking emails, to do photography, 
do graphics, right? Danny, Danny I'm starting. Okay. Uh, I would <laughs> come on. Well, uh, well Danny I think accounting. first and foremost, you need to identify what the fuck it is because a lot of people just don't know or don't yeah. even ask themselves that question. And then maybe try to identify whether it's a person or a company or a few people or companies and then just reach out um, and do – well, maybe not even reach out. Just start doing free work right away. I was going to say, what, um, what, what, let's get a show of hands. Who did it for free first? <laughs> Thank you. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> those listening, everyone those raised, listening, their, everyone hand. raised, everyone hey, raised hey, their hand. Including Kyle. <laughs> yeah, including Kyle. Which is honestly kind of funny, too, because I kind of rewind back to, like, college and everything. And you, you know, when you're trying to get, like, an internship or something, and you'd always look for the paid internship, yeah. right? At least there was a lot. Maybe of, that's why we don't have a ton of interns. <laughs> yeah. That's no, right. No, but seriously, like, you, you kind of just naturally would gravitate because, I mean, who doesn't want to get paid, right? Yeah. But uh, I, I don't know why I even brought that up. But anyway. Uh, I, I think it's a huge point. It's, yeah. it, it is. Hey, which it's a huge point. Everyone that stayed around here came in that way. Yeah. Yes. That just goes to show that you, because you got to remember in my position, I want to test people first and then I'm the first one that wants to pay you if the value is there. Mm -hmm. See, people think it's the opposite way. I'm not trying to get more for nothing. I want to see who's going to fucking be a roll dog. And then I want to make it to where then you can experience this environment we created. So then you want to ride with me for a long time and then have some like real success mm -hmm. out of it. Not mm -hmm. the opposite where I'm trying to, hold you down, only pay you enough. Like I, I want, if the value is there, I want to pay because I want to keep it going. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the opposite of what people think. Yeah. You got to go through the farm system for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I would definitely do the free work and then reach out to them. Just be like, Hey, yeah, I mocked this up. Uh, you know, I, w I would try to like, you know, structure it away. And that's not like I know more than you or something like that, obviously. But like, that that's going to ultimately get your foot in the door because there's zero expectation yep. uh, in return. Um, and then who knows what they're going to say? Maybe they say something, maybe they don't respond, but enough of those you're going to get in somewhere. No, I question. think two things, I think doing that and then um, like kind of even over delivering during that process. Mm -hmm. Right. That's one of the reasons why Nick Sands uh, stuck out to me, you know, cause he's one of the most recent guys, right. Is that he um, was here on an internship and then was just like doing stuff that no one was telling him to do because he don't talk. He's silent. Nick. I mean, his friends mm -hmm. even said that at his wedding. Right. Mm -hmm. But I, but that's, that's the kind of stuff I notice. Yeah. Cause like when you're doing stuff and really Treadway as he's kind of morphed into more social media, he just started helping and doing it. Yep. You know what I mean? Just because he saw there was a need there and he knew it would help the team. And then he continued to teach himself. And so now he's starting to go to lean more towards that stuff. But that wasn't like, cause I sat him down and said, Tyler, I think we should do social media now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. it doesn't really work that way. I think the second piece on it is just surrounding yourself with the people that you want to be around with, like just getting in the conversation, you know, whatever it is. I think that that's also a really, really hard thing for people to actually get to. Especially today. <laughs> well, yeah, because think yeah. about how many iterations of this thing that's happened. When has it felt the best now? <laughs> years later mm -hmm. maybe there was a couple other times it was good or bad but you know what i'm saying the reality is that you're fighting for that but that's not guaranteed and that's really hard for sure it's really yeah. hard trayvon um so like for someone that's like in general just trying to get clients i would say like just simply putting yourself out there like actually like posting and actually starting and claiming that that's what you do like yeah. you mean like make it a point that that's what you do because i mean a lot of people they just struggle even just getting started in the first place like a lot of people like want to personal train or they want to be a photographer or something like that, but they don't even want to put on their social media that like, Hey, I'm taking clients or Hey, yeah. I want to shoot some pictures or something like that. Like just putting it out there and claiming that, Hey, I'm a photographer. This is what I do. Fuck I think know. like starting there is a great place to start. Trey, what I think too, from your, this is just my perception, but I mean, I think it's right. It's like, you're such a quiet dude anyway. But then when I saw you, not necessarily with what we work with, but when I saw you do the gear and I saw you do the vintage stuff, I saw the Trayvon that's probably like me as a workout guy uh, mm -hmm. to a point, right? Because for lack of a way, we forced you to be a picture video guy yeah, because yeah. that was your opportunity. But then but when it's I, still something creative, though. And it I is. Love any, I love anything creative, though, so I still enjoy it just as much as I do at other stuff, though, is the thing. Correct, which is why it didn't yeah. look forced once you yeah. got into it. So my point is, though, 
I watched that live one night, and I've spoke about this before, mm -hmm. where he was on with someone else sharing all this, like, history on the vintage stuff. And I saw, like, Trayvon that I've seen in the gym, but a lot of people don't know that guy, right? Yeah. But I saw it in a whole different thing I didn't even know about. That's why the beefy tag, I came in the next day. <laughs> I, was, I, I saw these quests, beefy the beefy tag, <laughs> and I got my Rolls Royce shirt on a beefy tag, bro. <laughs> so I'm just saying. But my point is that it was, like, one of those things where you didn't – my perception of Trey knowing you was that you really didn't put yourself out there at all. Mm -hmm. But since you started putting yourself out there, look at what's come from it. Yeah. It's not like you're out there every day doing it, but like you got more comfortable. But I think it was like your advice is proper because how the fuck is anybody going to know that you do any of this shit if you're not fucking telling anybody? Yeah. And fuck, who cares what your high school friends think or your fucking uncle or go, they can all fuck off. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're doing something and you're claiming to do it motherfuckers have to know. So whether you're reaching out and saying, Hey, you know what? Let me get you 12 pictures for your Instagram. Once they see it, they can't unsee it. That, that's one thing that I would tell you about free work or add value. Once I experience it as a businessman, I don't want to not experience it. If it's good, you see what I'm saying? Like, cause you know, then you're giving less of a product to your customer or your, or like, what people are seeing on social media is less quality. You you think I want to go back to Fonto when I got Colt? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? What using? <laughs> yeah, bro. Fonto. I but Fonto. I remember you talking <laughs> about that. P-H-O-N-T-O. Wow. Shout out Fonto. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> so my point is like, I think that the getting yourself out there, people think it has to be perfect. It's going to be really uncomfortable. And that's all, but that's all part of the growth though. That's so you, I think you're really a big epitome of that whole thing. And then I see you tweeting in fucking Miami, you're a fucking Twitter influencer now. I mean, there's yeah. all kinds of shit going on. It's good. <laughs> no shirt underneath the zip up. I'm like, I hope Trey's okay when he's in Miami on a yacht, fucking Trey's the fucking king of Web three. For real. Dude, I'm serious. For real. He's we, like we, we he's, Yeah. He's <laughs> like uh he's like a web three Don. That's what that's what's happening yo, right now. Yeah. A, a year yes. ago, a year ago, whenever we were all in crypto, Dogecoin, yeah. all that shit, we said we were going to be like the four founding fathers of yes. Web3. Trey is getting there. Is I would say he's there. He's there. Right okay, now. sorry. In my eyes, <laughs> he, in my eyes, he's there right yeah. now. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Which is awesome. Well, I'm glad to be a part. And of I this. say, and I told Trey, <laughs> I said, Trey, we go to these events. I'll be your bodyguard. Yeah, I'm yeah. here for you, dude. I told him this morning, like, if anyone knows <laughs> in this whole scheme of things of, like, if you have in your vertical, you know, you're some type, I don't even like the word use influencer because it sounds whack, but, like, a person that does what you do really well and, and, and some type of expert on it, you're always going to be able to leverage that for some type of business in a positive way, teach people whatever. Trey's building that rapport with that community and the other people that do what he does really well and, it, and he mm -hmm. gets it and, and when he said a long time ago i want to be involved in something that's cutting edge and new and it's exactly what he's doing so it's like that's, that's awesome fucking sweet yeah. i fucking love it i'm just down for the ride same bro yeah cool you would have loved the bot to the bodyguard part you would have loved uh miami like i had people coming up to me and like tell me they like love the twitter spaces and shit really <laughs> yeah oh, dear. that's so good this, this, hey. this, hey, this might be my new thing every nft event i go to with trey now i'm just gonna get a shirt that says trey security yeah <laughs> dude and i'll I'll, 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 I'll make sure it's like sized down so i look extra fucking yeah, obviously. Like all, all black uniform all right that's goals so good. I'm gonna add, write that in my note, dude. That, yeah. You know, it'd be amazing is that then people are like, God, Trey is fucking famous. He's got his own security. Guard. That's what I'm saying. Dude, you should put like Dear security. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. Busy, yeah. yeah, like I'll, I'll be standing right by Trey. Trey's like some guy trying to talk to him. Like, like who are you? <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. so good. Oh shit! Uh, you should have like the gate or whatever, like you have it in the clubs the and the VIP. Yeah, I, I got, I got like the, I got like the walkie-talkie. I'm like the air. Hey, dude, you, we should both. I'll, I'll be the other body. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. All right, all right, all right. We're doing that. We're dude, doing that. No, so like two like fucking no taking, units. No, yeah. no taking. Yeah. We, uh, we probably need to like make this video like in the office though. Like, yeah. We get like a fucking the the ball, like Trey sitting back in here. You look like, <laughs> yeah. you got, hey, 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 you guys won't let me in. 
<laughs> the king I'm like, I'm like the king. Can Trey, king can you come out and let me in? Like, yeah. I got to fuck you. Yeah, so. oh, That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, now back to yeah. All right, so I want to pick back off what Danny said of surrounding yourself with people. I always think about, and I guess I kind of did this without even knowing it, but how you went up to Serrano and basically said, I just want to like be friends with you and just know like what you do, basically. Yes, 100%. I've I done think, that with a lot of people. I think people would be surprised if you actually went to someone and said, I'll work, work with you for free. I just want to learn to do what you do, that they probably would be super fucking excited to have you because yes. they need someone to learn how to do what they do. Here's what you got to remember. The mentor, whatever fucking term, is you signing up to help somebody you don't know for free and teach them everything you've done and getting nothing in return. It sounds fucking mean. But when people like that I don't know say, I want you to be my mentor, but why? Like, I, you see what I'm saying? Like, there's yeah. nothing, there's, and I'm not saying I need something back, but in our relationships, all of our working relationships, everyone wins. And so, yeah, of course, if Cole says, gee, I need you to sit down and tell me everything you know about stocks, I'm gonna fucking do it. He probably knows more than me, but that's my point, right? Yeah. At the, it, it's like when people come up and say, I'm willing to do this or this, they then get a chance to maybe build that relationship to have that. So like Noah did a good job of when he was here for his internship. He came here, he spent his hours, he came and trained a little bit. But there's where I think this was what I've tried to learn. He said, man, you know, I'm really thinking about like, I want to be in the 4am crew or whatever. And I said, I think you could. I was like, but dude, you live an hour away. You work till midnight. Do you think that's something you can keep up? Or should we just keep this relationship as you're an intern right now? You're getting your feet wet. You're learning. So I still like you. You come when you can. And then down the road, that internship is allowed you that next position where, hey, gee, can I get 15 minutes of your time? I need to learn this. Of course, dude, you spent 100 hours here for free or whatever the fucking number. It's something like that. Hey, gee, I, I'm going to move closer. I think I, I want to try to, to, you know, can I get like a real try at this thing to be with the crew? I'm more likely to say yes. I'm not even saying no. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> but my point of that is that's how that stuff works. Mm -hmm. Not you just message me on Instagram and you want me to be your mentor. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's not how the world fucking works. And I, I think that sounds fucking mean, but it's just reality. Because what happens is a lot of people wonder why you guys are in these chairs. What they need to realize is you guys went through and my I can only speak my own fucking universe I got going here it was all earned nothing's given nothing that is happening right in this whole room is given to anybody mm -hmm. you guys earned every that's why even when you guys come to me and throw like some good love back at me I always answer usually with I didn't give you that bro you earned every bit of it because if you didn't earn it you wouldn't be sitting here it's just the fucking truth and so I need people to know that you have to earn just like I do with Serrano I told him, this is a great example, I want to be your friend and I need to learn from you. He said, okay, what do you need? And I said, I'm, I'm running bodybuilding shows right now. I've already taken the initiative. I'm building the event. It's already fucking happening. Will you give me enough time to come just look at the guys at the night show? I don't need anything and tell me which guys to test because I want to keep drugs out. That's all I need from you. I'm not saying... I fictitiously want to be this great trainer and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Can I just come? Like, no. I said, this is what I need help with. So you know what he did? He doesn't fucking know me. He comes to the event and sees, oh, this shit's put together pretty well. I've already put work in. Mm -hmm. Then he's like, test that guy. Test this guy. Is that all you need? Sure. So then I don't talk to him for a little while. I say, hey, these guys, they tested clean, whatever. Then it's the next, the next ask. Because I've already proved something. He's impressed. Mm -hmm. He's impressed by what I got going on. It's like you have to build. Those relationships took time to then I come to him and say, you know, this is probably eight or ten years later. I need help with the formulations for a muscle farm. You know how easy that, that answer is? I already built it up. Mm -hmm. So I think that people want to jump to that ask point. It's not how it works. Mm -hmm. At least that's not how it works with me. But I would say that's not how it works. That's what happened with my story with you. Yeah. It takes time. It, it just showed up at old school and yeah. then didn't t really hardly talk to you. Yeah. And then you I said was hi just, to me. 
whenever I showed up, I just knew <laughs> that I just needed to. This guy's arms are too small. I just needed to small. surround myself with like that environment. Yeah. And I just showed it to the fucking gym. I was just, I was just wanting to work out. Yeah. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah, just be in it, dude. Yeah. I wish I could know what my first question was to you. I'm sure it was arm related. Yeah, obviously. arm related you by. Know, as a, hold on, this whole question, <laughs> this whole question thing, like I think people really need to evaluate. If you get the opportunity to talk to someone and stuff like that, you better have a good question. Every time, yeah, I'm in a strategic position, I know exactly what I'm going to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. for everybody. And look, here's a great example: the first time I ever speak to Arnold Schwarzenegger, like speak where he he actually looked at me. Yeah, I was at the book signing. For the Total Recall. Now, I had met him one other time, but it was like I walked by him and took a picture. Like, he he didn't even know. I, it could have been me or Danny. It doesn't matter. Like, anybody, right? I'm in line for two hours. My business is already doing like $50 million. But I'm in line for two hours at Easton. He's late to get the book signed. Purely just to be able to speak 20 or 30 seconds to him. So, I'm waiting in line. And Jason Daniels, shout out Jason Daniels behind me. He gets the picture of it because it's in the mindset manual, I think. So that's even another thing. I'm even like capturing it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even look up from the books. He's just signing and moving because he's fucking late. He gets to mine and I say, Mr. Schwarzenegger, you know, my business will do 70 million this year. I'm one of the vendors at the Arnold Classic. It. Ooh, like attention, chit chat, 10 seconds. But when then I... When that comes across his desk, which I wanted it to, he knew who, not necessarily me exact, but it was the first time Muscle Farm had been said to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then he could see, oh, I'm one of the big sponsors. That You know what I'm saying? Like, But I didn't just go in, oh, I love, you know, I love the chest and back workout. I love your chest. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I really, that yeah. Great. That would have been great. Oh, exactly. Shit. My point is that when you're really, yeah. and this sounds real agenda-based, I guess, which is uh, maybe sounds like not um, uh, organic or whatever, yeah. but you're only going to get around certain people so many potential times. You, you should try to utilize them if you really are trying to know or be around people. And people do that with me at the Arnold Classic. Mm -hmm. And some people works out for and some people doesn't. But if they if I can tell they're really about getting better, then you know, it's like that's the first step. I remember most faces too. Yeah. So then when people hit me up, I'm like, Oh yeah, I remember this dude. All right. But then here's the next thing. Most people then will challenge you and then we'll see. Now we motherfuckers tell me they want to diet, they want to do this, they want to do that. They just never do it. I say, All right, we'll do this. I just usually goes crickets. Yep. There's a recent guy um, that Jake Emery knows, J that Nate Saxton. Sh shout out Nate if you're listening. He came here, and he really wasn't strong enough to fuck with our crew straight up, and he was out, he was out of shape. I told his ass to do the fucking island abs. He got fucking shredded. He uh, went and started a business, does like knee sleeves and elbow sleeves and shit. He said that the discipline helped completely change his life. Like, I see him, a Jake talks to him more than I do. I see him a couple times. You know, uh, he has to come back to the crew, but I was like, dude, you just got to get, like, way stronger because it's just, th that's the level that we're at right now. Now, that might be for him or not for him, and he might never come here, but if Nate Saxon calls me tomorrow, he did exactly what I asked. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to at least give him the time. And I don't think, like, I think it's more about, are people, about, are you about it? Are you about it? Or are you just trying to fake be about it? And... I just think people that are in those positions that you want to learn from are going to figure that out real quick. They'll know. Right That's all right. I do. Yeah. And if you make it through the washing machine, then there's – and it, it's usually only a couple things. But a lot of people can't even consistently do that. So I commend you guys on being able to be consistent, continue to get better, and grow. And then all of us should be proud of the amount of work that we've consistently put together because it's only continue to get better. And I would argue that – this, I was like not real sure how this shit was going to go after I left MP guys. I mean, this has went better than I could have even expected, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is because I've been, I've been doing it with you guys and building this thing. So it's like, you know, or multiple things and other things that we got going on and other things we've tried that didn't work because we've had all kinds of stuff we've attempted, but that's <laughs> part of the process. We believe that this team could really like, we could be dropped in any business and make it better. All of us. 
one second. One million percent. And as a team, it's worth a lot of money to anybody that would be able to say, I got this business. In a matter of fuck, if they're selling air conditioners, I, we could do all of it and make it look fucking top notch like that. And I know that that's probably going to be a thing for us at some point in life where it's like this business needs help. We go in, it costs you know, one million dollars <laughs> <laughs> and we give you the fucking business and it's fucking sick all the way across the board. I believe that's what we we're really a marketing firm that has figured out a way to do things at an elite level it's a and turnkey it, marketing firm and very speedy <laughs> too, which is what. Mm. Why I love Nipsey stuff, a million reasons why I love Nipsey stuff. But he was he understood that about them guys too. And they were starting to do that before he passed away, where they were starting to take other businesses and run it through the washing machine of how they built all the Crenshaw stuff and, you know, with the record labels and all that stuff. So it's like that's what I believe we're really building and have, you know, for a long a long term thing. So mm -hmm. but anyway, that was a long rant. Good shit. It was pretty good. You guys got anything else? This is awesome. Cole, it was awesome. It's uh, a lot of shit. Shout out to Cole. One real quick thing, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have maybe I'll record this with Trey. I got a new thing I'm putting up on uh, on the channel. It's called Six Life Questions with Corey. Well, with whoever I'm interviewing, yeah. but I'm hosting it. Okay, and I did it with Danny too. So Cole, I think answered them really well. But it, but but here's what I like about content that provokes thought. He looked uncomfortable basically the rest of the day after it. And I kept asking him. Like, I could tell something was up with him. He's like, I don't like my questions. I don't like my answers. I'm like, cool, I thought your answer was good. He's like, you should have answered him better than that. Like, All right. So then I call him later. I call. I made an extra phone call. I'm like, Cole, you all right? He's like, well, I already had four of them written down. I'm like, would well, you want me to send you all six? He goes, yeah, send them to me. And then he wrote back, I'm going to answer these with intention. Or I've never answered them with intention. Wrote it down, sent it to me. It's really fucking good. I offered to reshoot it. He declined. I'm a one take homie. Yeah, but it was an awesome exercise uh, that I'm going to start posting stuff. Yeah. Like anybody that comes through the office, mm -hmm. it's like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. I'm, I'm itching to do it. Yeah, no, since we're going to we'll do, do it, it today. Since, like, since, yeah. you, <laughs> since you told me about Nicole, though, I've been like, kind of like thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> like, like, really yo, so, do you know the questions? No, 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 no. I never right, told yeah, anybody. So here's the thing. Yeah. I don't, so yeah, I want to get into Danny, it. <laughs> Danny and Tyler went right after me. Tyler didn't hear. Danny so heard I, my questions. I kind of got to hear, so I had a little bit of a prep. I still struggle. I don't want to know like anything going in. I just want to clarify. I was... So these questions. Hey, yeah. so I just done, done cleaned not, the warehouse for ten hours, and I just yeah. walk in and say, "Cold, jump down real it's quick." It's like two o'clock <laughs> in the afternoon, right? And the questions that G asks, they're not like they're like very deep questions. Like they're the type of questions, it's life questions. that you need probably ten minutes to actually think about. Maybe each one. Yes. <laughs> so we're doing this real time, and I'm just saying the first thing that pops into my mind, right? And I guess they were, and I went and re, like wrote them out and typed them out. And I didn't really change my answer no. that much. I just wanted to know and write it out exactly how I would say it. I was mad because I didn't know how to answer the questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you knew the answer, but you didn't I knew know the answer. It, but I he did, articulated yeah, I didn't know how to articulate when he, when he yeah. wrote it down. Yes. But I think so. This. And, it, go ahead. Go ahead. And I just had never actually thought about them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. Well, and so then it poses the point. Because Trey's going to go in completely blind, quote unquote, right? Do I let people know what the questions are or do I not? And I think that might be personality driven a little bit too, yeah. potentially. Danny probably like – he got more prepared than you. And I also think that's more of how he operates. You're an on-the-fly guy, but it was really some fucking – yeah. You know some deep stuff. I don't know. Well, I like to be self-aware. I, I yeah, consider yeah. myself very self a self-aware right. person. Well, the the other thing too, these questions they're good <sighs> questions to continually revisit. Yeah. So that's the other thing is they're going to change on age exactly. and time yeah. and Which, experience. That's why. Which the past I, years really it made me it made it a lot easier for me to answer those questions. Yeah. 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 That's why I went and typed them out and I said I texted you. I said I screenshot. I sent them back the answers. That, <laughs> yeah, that, you did. That, it was that amazing. I wrote it out. And I said, I'll just look at this in 10 years. But you, one of my favorite things you said was I answered these with intention and everyone should. Yeah. And I, and I thought that I thought, well, that was really because good. also I also said I was mad because the stuff I said on the fly and how I articulated, I didn't want someone who like actually like cares about me to listen to them yeah. and think like that, like that's what it is. Like really, yeah. you know, so he was, he was very 
conflicted. Self-respect. Yeah. 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 I was. Yeah. That's why I offered to say, let's shoot another one. No, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll revisit it, though. Yeah. It was yeah. good. All right, cool. So, guys, look out look out for that because Cole's episode is number one. <laughs> 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 All right. Brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com. Sam Adams. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms Danny at Trace. Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We are out.